Okay, so we're going fairly controversial today, but on my recent travels to Norway, I was offered a whale burger in a restaurant. I'm not kidding you, an actual whale meat burger. And my immediate reaction was like, what the actual f is happening here? Now, I don't know how much you guys know about whaling. I kind of feel like we all know a little bit about the whaling that happens in Japan that's fairly well publicized. And I always had some kind of vague notion that there were some communities way up north that still relied on whales for like subsistence fishing. But this was completely different. This was me being straight up served whale meat in a restaurant commercially for profit. And I had no idea what was going on. So I came home, did some research, obviously, and was quite frankly astounded by what I discovered. So despite the controversy, that's what we're talking about today. For those who are new to the channel, welcome to Tally's Marine Tales, where we talk about all things ocean and marine biology. And without further ado, let's get into this crazy business that is whaling in Norway. Okay, so given the controversial nature of this topic, there is a lot of misinformation out there on the World Wide Web, um, but I am going to try and give you an accurate and factual representation of this industry. I have used reliable resources throughout and I will quote my sources as I go. But we do have a lot of stuff to cover, um, so I have divided this video up into different topics. I'll list them here so you can skip through to the ones you're interested. But we're going to start talking about the legalities of this um, because you might be asking yourself Yourself, just like I was asking myself how the heck is this legal wasn't whaling banned like years and years ago and indeed you would be right in thinking so commercial whaling was banned all the way back in 1982 by the International Whaling Commission in response to whales almost becoming extinct because of fishing now Japan has found their own loophole around this by stating that they kill whales for scientific purposes. This obviously has all of its own issues we're not gonna get into, but Norway and Iceland were actually the only two countries who flat out just refused to cooperate with the ban. They didn't agree with the moratorium, so their whaling practices continue to this day. Okay, so how it works in Norway is that the government sets quotas, um, which is the number of whales that can be killed and harvested every year. For the past couple of years, this usually sits around a thousand whales um, and they provide permits to fishers to go out and do the harvesting. They are only allowed to harvest minke whales, which are not considered endangered, and the meat is used for consumptive purposes. And in the last couple of years, this quota hasn't even been filled. So for example, the 2022 quota was set at 917 whales, but only 580 were harvested. Now the question is, why is Norway one of the only countries to disagree with this moratorium on whaling? And this is a quote from an official government website, and it essentially boils down to the idea that Norway feels that they have the right to manage their own natural resources how they see fit which is all fair and well, but minke whales, like most whales, you know, they like to travel internationally. They like to adventure and see the world. So even though their migration patterns are not super well studied, the fact that they migrate across international boundaries from feeding grounds to breeding grounds is fairly well established. So this argument of the Norway of the Norwegian government falls flat because it's not only their resources to manage and the vast majority of the international community apart from Norway, Iceland and Japan disagree with the practice of commercial whaling. Okay, next main topic we're talking about ethics, which is a pretty big kettle of fish. It's very hotly debated. It brings up a lot of different emotions and a lot of different people and that's fine, but it's something we have to think about no matter how difficult when we're talking about killing whales, which are one of the most intelligent and social beings that we share this planet with. Okay, so how exactly are minke whales killed? Now I'm not gonna be showing any videos because I don't want that type of content on my channel. And you might be thinking, surely we've moved on from the days of harpooning, right? No, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. The only difference now is that the harpoons are equipped with grenades, which explode once inside the whale's body, which means we're essentially exploding whales from the inside. I know, again, I was like, what the f But according to the Norwegian government, this is the most humane way to kill whales because it, takes, it renders them instantly and irreversibly unconscious or dead. 
but their definition of instantly is very, very different to my definition of instantly because their definition of instantly means that it takes an average of two minutes for a whale to die after being harpooned. So that's two minutes of incredible pain and suffering that this really intelligent animal has to go through before it can die. That's not instantly in my opinion. And that's not even the worst part. In 20% of instances, whales aren't killed within two minutes. It can take an average of six minutes for them to die, but it can take all the way up to 25 minutes for a whale to die after being harpooned. Again, 25 minutes of incredible pain, trauma, and suffering that this animal has to go through before it dies. Now, one of the main arguments of the people who support whaling is that this is a much more ethical and humane way of getting your meat compared to the industrialized practice of farming because, you know, these whales were free and allowed to swim and live their lives before we absolutely butchered them. But I would just like to point out that according to EU regulations, when it comes to slaughtering a farm animal, before killing can happen, they have to be rendered instantly unconscious and when we say instantly here it means instantly and they have to be killed within 15 seconds of being rendered unconscious to reduce any chance of pain or suffering 15 seconds versus two minutes and up to 25 minutes for whales so this is definitely not what i would consider ethical or humane i know there's going to be people out there who disagree with me but i do feel that the vast majority of you out there are going to agree with me on this now, another cherry on top of this ethics issue is that most of the whales that are hunted and killed are pregnant females. Now, I couldn't find any real data to um, look at the exact proportion of whales that are killed that are pregnant females, but there was a documentary that was um, made and aired by NRK, which is a Norwegian government-owned television and radio broadcasting company, and they themselves in the documentary stated that up to 90% of whales that are killed are pregnant females. In addition to what I could find in the scientific literature, minke whales both fall pregnant and give birth in the winter months, which means that for sure they will be pregnant in the summer months, which is when the Norwegian whalers hunt them. So most fisheries around the world actually avoid hunting pregnant females for obvious reasons, ethical reasons, biological reasons, sustainability reasons, but not the Norwegian whalers, they don't care. And for me, this is another big red cross in the ethics column of this topic. Okay, so now that we've covered the dubious ethics, we're moving on to the main claim from the Norwegian government that this is a sustainable practice. And if one looks at the numbers, this does seem to be the case. So all of Norway's fisheries are highly monitored and regulated, and the whaling fishery is no different. Um, so they perform pretty extensive surveys throughout their waters to count the number of whales. And since 1995, the abundance of whales seems to be holding steady at an estimated 100,000 whales in their waters. Now, I'm not sure how this would compare to the abundance of whales prior to commercial whaling, so like before the 19th century, but over the last couple of years, the abundance of whales seems to be holding steady, which then does render this as a sustainable practice. And this was further supported by ASITES risk assessment, which is a more neutral body. And in their assessment, they stated that population estimates over the past 20 years indicate that the population has been relatively stable. And while there are fundamental data gaps and uncertainties related to the long-term persistence of this population, the export of minke whale harvested by Norway does not appear to have been detrimental thus far. Okay, so it does seem to be a sustainable fishery, but I really wanted to delve a bit into the economics of this industry. What I'm getting at here is, you know, is this a profitable industry that contributes significantly to the country's GDP? And the reason I asked this was because I really just wanted to try and understand why Norway is still pretty much the only country to do this commercial whaling. Like why are they the only ones to disagree with the ban on whaling. And one of my first ideas was, okay, is it making them a lot of money? Because that would make sense then. But the answer is surprisingly no, for a variety of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is that there's just no real market for whale meat. Despite the fact that the Norwegian government are 
desperately trying to create a local market for whale meat, understandably, people just don't want to eat whale meat. In fact, a survey commissioned um, by a variety of organizations back in 2019 um, asked about a thousand uh, Norwegians whether they ate whale meat and only 4% said that they ate whale meat frequently. Most, 47% of people said that they ate whale meat once a long time ago, which just highlights this change in public opinion and how people just really don't want to eat whale meat anymore. This was further highlighted in a pretty extensive report that was drafted by the WWF and stated that the fact that the quotas aren't filled is very likely related to the, to the fact that there's just not enough demand for this product. And according to the central organization that most of Norway's whale meat is sold through, sales were difficult due to the fact that there were fewer buyers and reduced purchases. Buyers had no desire to buy produce for storage. So there's a very limited domestic market, but what about international exports? Well, it's actually very difficult to export whale meat internationally because of the ban and they're on the CITES list, which means it's illegal to trade in whale meat across um, international boundaries. But the three countries who sort of uh, oppose the ban, Japan, Norway, and Iceland have got around this. And traditionally, Norway has exported a lot of their whale meat to Iceland and Japan, but again, this is in like fairly low quantities. It doesn't constitute a big financial industry. And there have been some issues with Japan refusing meat from Norway due to high levels of toxic pollutants. But we'll get more to that in the next section. So again, there's not a big international market and it's just really not making money for Norway. Now, a further issue is that of subsidies, which is essentially the Norwegian government paying money to the fishery to support it. Now, the Norwegian government claims it is an unsubsidized fishery, but this is just simply not true. And the Norwegian taxpayers who largely disagree with the practice of whaling end up actually funding quite a large portion of it. Now, according to this same report uh, drafted for the WWF, the subsidies are not direct and obvious, but they are definitely there in a multitude of forms. For example, there is a lot of money that goes into the research and development of products related to whale meat and also into marketing those products. So for example, they actually funded a whale mobile that traveled around Norway offering free samples of whale meat and recipes to people. So it's basically the Norwegian government trying to get people who don't want to eat whale meat to eat whale meat because they insist on catching the whale meat. They also spend a decent amount of cash on lobbyists to defend their position on whaling because most people disagree with it and they have to fight for their position. And finally, there are the more direct and obvious incentives such as fuel tax subsidies or fishers getting money to build freezers or to transport the meat or things like that. And once the report added up all of these financial incentives together, they actually found that and 50% of the gross value of the whale meat was being paid back into the industry. So essentially half of the value of the whale meat is being subsidized by the government. And the economic report could say it much better than I can. And it stated that it is clear that whaling is financially marginal and at present dependent on subsidies. In both Japan and Norway, substantial funds are made available to prop up an operation which would otherwise be commercially marginal at best and most likely loss making. So given these dubious ethics and the fact that it's not making any money, what are these whales dying for? Okay, so that was a bit of a whirlwind, but essentially the main takeaway messages are this. Norway is one of the only countries to outright object to the ban on commercial whaling and they still continue with this practice. They state that it is a sustainable fishery, which seems to be true, but there are many issues with the ethics of this fishery, how they kill whales and the fact that most of the whales that they do kill are pregnant females. Additionally, this is an industry that seems to be reliant on subsidies, doesn't make any money and just isn't popular. Most of the Norwegian public disagree with it and pretty much the rest of the world disagrees with it. And it just strikes me as really, really odd for one of the most 
wealthiest and environmentally minded countries in the world. And from what I could tell, it just seems to be a handful of politicians and fishers who are desperately clinging on to this dying practice. In fact, Iceland, who is the only other country to object to the ban on whaling, is set to end their whaling practices by 2024 because they have just outright admitted that there's no market for whale meat. So I don't know why Norway insists on carrying on with it. I don't know when they're going to end this highly controversial activity, but I certainly hope it's soon. And then maybe we can start tackling what's happening in Japan. <laughs> but that's another topic. And with that, my friends, I really hope you found this video interesting because I found it fascinating reading about this and diving into it and trying to understand what was happening with this fishery because it's something I had no idea about. So please leave your own thoughts and comments down in the comments below, but please, please, please be kind, mindful, respectful to others. I know this is, as I've said, a controversial and sort of um, topic that brings up a lot of emotions but let's just be kind to each other in the comments please obviously we're going to have different opinions um, and yeah if there's anything that doesn't um, meet those sort of criteria I'm just going to remove the comments but um, yeah I'm not going to end on my usual note of I hope you have a happy day because I don't really feel like ending on that when talking about a video killing whales um, but I guess then until next time uh, we'll see you guys in the next video